Hi, I'm Michelle Dufresne. I'm an independent consultant in the New York City area specializing in rule-based business application. <laughs> this uh, presentation is a part three of a three-part series that talks about using the semantic web technologies for domain model uh, of rule-based business application. In the first part, we talked about the web ontology language, which is a W3C standard, and in particular, we talked about the um, uh, LDL, um, which is the uh, description logic flavor of the language. Um, this language is based on a formal logic-based semantic, and we looked at all six class descriptor uh, that exist in the language that can be used to construct um, class constructors for building classes from uh, expressions. And then we uh, saw that we can uh, infer or deduce the class-subclass relationships based on the class expressions. And then we looked at um, combining um, the, des the description logic formalis with the uh, logic programs formalis such that we could write rules on top of ontologies. Now let's look at using RDF for the domain model. RDF is a very flexible data structure that um, has the characteristics of a directed graph and is supported in many programming languages and has good uh, XML serialization. For example, these three statements um, says that uh, Mr. Dupont is a art collector and has an artifact called Bold Party, which in, in turn is an impressionist painting. Now, we can uh, access the RDF uh, API directly to assert and navigate through the graph. However, um, this gets really complicated when there's a large graph with many uh, classes and properties. It's uh, preferable to have proxy classes specific to the domain model that access the graph. These uh, proxy classes can uh, actually be generated from the ontology in the, the programming language of choice. That would be either Java or Python or um, any other programming language. Here an example of how we would create those three statements using generated proxy classes. Basically, we would create instance variable uh, of specific type and use a factory to create those classes. And as the class are created, it would assert in the graph the uh, appropriate statements now we can infer on the domain model uh, to apply all the logical uh, entailments from um, the class constructors and the class axioms from the ontology. Rules can be generated um, to apply those uh, logical entailments. So for example, recalling on in our example, we add a uh, class constructors uh, specifying that impressionist art collector is defined as the uh, the conjunction of art collector and all of the individual that has at least one artifact of type impressionist painting. We could generate a rule. Um, actually, those rules can be generated directly from the ontology uh, based on those class constructors. Here, the rule uh, is um, very simple. Basically, it says um, everything that starts with a question mark is actually a variable. And it says that if you have a, co a collector of type art collector, which has an artifact that is of type impressionist painting, then the collector must be an impressionist art collector. So looking at those three triples that we had at the beginning, um, and when we apply the rules, we would infer that um, our collector, Mr. Dupont, is actually of type impressionist art collector because he has a, an artifact that is of type impressionist painting. Now, this can be accessed using proxy classes 
where it provides a uniform um, interface to both the infer and the asserted graph. For example, from a, uh, an API perspective, the first three statements here are the same as we had before, where we create uh, an art collector uh, and then we create an impressionist painting uh, artifact and then we set that artifact to be uh, the artifact of the art collector. Then we invoke the rule engine by calling infer and then the rule engine will uh, infer that this art collector is in fact an impressionist art collector so it will uh, classify the individual from a more generic type of type art collector to a more specific type, the impressionist art collector. Then from an API perspective, we could ask if um, our collector is actually of type impressionist art collector. And if it is, we get um, an handle to that more specific type. So what we did here is actually uh, quite different of what you normally do in object-oriented. It's a little bit of a paradigm shift here, where we created uh, variables not of a specific type like we did for impressionist painting, but we created a more generic type uh, of the type art collector, and the rule engine told us is a more specific one, and we were able to cast down to the more specific type. Also, we could use querying to access the RDF graph, which is quite useful when you have a large and complex graph, so you don't have to navigate all of the domain model uh, objects or uh, the, uh, the RDF API directly. Here we have a select statement where we select the collectors that are of type art collector. We get their um, artifact and the year and the artist who created the artifact. When we invoke those um, uh, queries, we get results set in a tabular fashion that is very similar to what we get with uh, uh, using relational database and, and uh, you know, issuing queries to those databases. So this brings um, the, uh, the programming model in a paradigm very similar to the one uh, that we're used today where we build web applications that access relational database and then produce views based on result set. The same approach can be taken here uh, with the difference that some of the information, some of the columns would be information, asserted information coming from the database and some other columns would be inferred by the rule engine but provided in a uniform fashion, in a single tabular fashion. So Top Engine is a um, semantic web rule engine that is a fusion between description logic and logic programs. So it allows to use uh, description logic for the definition of the vocabulary primitive and to write um, rules uh, using those uh, vocabulary primitive. Also, uh, Top Engine implement the uh, LDL uh, reasoning services so we could uh, ensure that the ontology is consistent before we add um, rules to it. And also um, we can write rules um, using um, a closed world semantic so it, it would have a behavior very similar to uh, the database uh, as we are familiar today. The inference engine is written in C++ that use a rate based algorithm uh, for forward and backward chaining and also uh, support querying capability. So that completes the, uh, the third segment of the, of the presentation and uh, I hope this uh, was providing useful information. Please come and see us at uh, dufriendconsulting.com. Thank you.